Thanks for coming on out here today. Um, I'm going to show you something that hopefully you didn't expect to see. Um, uh, as I was introduced, uh, it is a non-headgear solution. The company that I co-founded and run is called Looking Glass Factory. We're based out of Brooklyn in Hong Kong. And we're 20 people that chase the cinema dream of the hologram. That dream that has been around for a few decades in which groups of people can gather together and see and interact with a three-dimensional world without anything on their head, so no peripherals. So we all know what holograms look like from the movies. Uh, so they look like this, or in Big Hero 6, where um, Hero is making uh, Baymax in a type of volumetric holographic display. And we're chasing that dream. There's a few groups like ours, small groups right now, that are in basement labs and um, you know, in small little skunk works in the big companies that have been forgotten about since uh, Oculus was acquired um, by Facebook a few years ago. But we think that that is about to change. So as everyone in this room knows, there are three pillars of the connection of the real world in 3D digital space right now. So VR, um, I view as being a really powerful tool, but a very high friction tool, a lot like scuba diving, where you have to gear up for 20 or 30 minutes, and then you go into a wonderful world, but typically you're alone. Augmented reality, I view as kind of snorkeling. More people can do it more quickly. You're in between the real world and 3D digital space but you're still an individual with a piece of gear on your face. And again, that is powerful, as everyone in this room knows, in certain situations. But our belief in looking glass is that the future interface that people will interact with most of the time when they're interacting with three-dimensional content will be more similar to the systems of the past, like radios or campfires that groups of people gather around and instantly have a connection eye to eye with each other around a conversation, around a CAD model that they're working on, around a medical scan that a doctor has given and is sharing with a group of patients. And we've developed several technologies over the last four years in Looking Glass that reach, we think, very close to achieving that dream of the hologram. So what you see at the right is our newest system and we're showing it for one of the first times here at AWE. If you go to our booth 938 um, tomorrow and Friday, you can check it out. We have a bunch of stuff running in Looking Glasses. And this will actually launch uh, in a couple months. So this isn't something that is distant in the future. This will be available for people to purchase at roughly the price point of original VR headsets when that sort of emerged. Um, and with the same sort of plugins into SDK, into Unity through our Unity SDK and whatnot. So this is kind of what a looking glass is like. Um, I don't know if anyone watches Adventure Time, but there's a lot of hologram stuff in Adventure Time. Um, the looking glass is a hybrid light field display and volumetric display, combining the great characteristics that each of these separate display disciplines have had in the past into a single system that lets a group of people see and interact with the three-dimensional world at 60 frames per second, full 16.7 million color depth, um, running off of regular computers that everyone in this room has. And uh, that's my daughter, Jane. She's working on um, something in Unity um, in a looking glass in our prototype lab uh, in Hong Kong. And it's easy enough for any, even kids, that have started to develop in Unity to get started working on very, very quickly. So I have a looking glass up here that everyone can see, because in the land of the hologram, we often are fighting against a lot of trends of shitty holograms, um, the 2D Pepper's ghosts that are prolific on the internet, that are great for stagecraft and are great in theme parks, but in which the illusion falls apart when you're in a room close with one another. And so we uh, are going to take great lengths to prove to anyone that comes by our booth um, that this technology is real. It's actually truly three-dimensional. 
And um, it's not something that's very distant in the future. It's not a MIT Media Lab project that you won't be able to get. It's arriving in a couple months. And here's a quick video of it. All of this footage was shot with just this phone in my pocket, a regular phone. So there's no post-process post effects or any, anything else going on, and that's fully digital. So it might look like a three-dimensional print, but it's actually four million pixels that then are together making up that three-dimensional world inside of that block of glass. So all of this work up here is a combination of work that we've done in Looking Glass as small demo applications, and also things that we've gotten from folks who have posted online, and you'll see their credits at the bottom. So we made an experimental um, volumetric video capture with iPhone 10 for the purpose of seeing what exists today on the capture side that's in tens of millions of people's pockets that then can be used in this new output device. And if this isn't clear, our goal is to be the universal input, the universal output device for any type of three-dimensional input, whether it's a volumetric video scan, a 3D scan um, that you can preview before you get a print of you and your family, uh, models that are made and animations that are made in Maya or Blender or Tinkercad, all of that content can live inside of the looking glass. We've been thinking a lot over the last four years about what possibilities are opened with this new type of interface. Uh, little friends, little Tamagotchis that can live inside of the looking glass. Eventually these will be connected with voice AI. We believe that the hologram in the way that we in looking glass envision the hologram is a perfect pairing with the ambient power and the zero friction interaction that people can have with voice AI like Alexa in their homes. And um, we think that this is one of the areas where it will get traction in a few years in the consumer market. Obviously, there's a huge amount of three-dimensional medical data that is now just handed to a patient on a CD. Um, that's going to change, and we think that's going to change sooner. We're pushing for that to change sooner than I think a lot of other folks realize. We have a DICOM importer. So no matter what type of 3D content you create in medicine, whether it's CT scan, MRI, or 4D ultrasound, that can go through our experimental DICOM importer and live today, right now, in the looking glass. And of course, there's entertainment options. So not only volumetric scans of live games, but also volumetric scans of people, like what Adai or a lot of other friends that we know, and I know that all of you know, in the field of volumetric capture, they've been wanting a casual, friction-free output device for this wonderful content that they're creating, and now that's possible. And also in schools, so there's a huge amount of curriculum that's been developed around the slowest output device imaginable, which is a 3D printer. So that's going to change. So all of the 3D content that, that's being made for 3D printers, and to some degree, for VR and AR headsets, we believe has a happier place to live that's instantaneous and in full color and can be viewed by groups of people inside of something like the looking glass. Um, that's all I have to say. I uh, have some um, time for questions if anyone has any. And uh, for anyone that wants to come up as we're switching crews, you can check out the looking glass up here or at our booth 938. Thanks. All right, very impressive. Anyone have any questions? How big can it scale? How big can it scale? Great. I, in every crowd, that's the first question, um, and a great question. So we have a system that is about three times as big as the 8.9-inch um, system that's on the desk here. So um, it's 15.6 inches diagonal. They can be tiled together into full walls, running off of that single SDK. Um, so we haven't pushed beyond that uh, publicly yet, but that 15.6 inch one will be available immediately. Yeah, so your right hand will ignite.
and you can light the frog. <laughs> Sorry, I just brought one. And <laughs> um, more at booth 938. <laughs> Um, we can kind of experience there. Um, it's about, well, uh, we're releasing more tech specs when we um, launch the product in a couple months, so I guess I should wait um, for that. But yeah, feel free to take photos or, or whatnot. Um, Any other questions? <laughs> what are you doing for a haptic interface tool? So, for um, some people, actually the sensation, the lifelikeness of the content that lives in the looking glass. So someone should use your right hand, and your index finger will ignite, and the frog will follow it a little bit higher. Can you see different yeah. Um, so what was the question again? Oh, haptic. So some of the demos that you'll find at our booth. Um, are so lifelike that people swear they feel through just visual um, sensation alone, physical haptic response on their hands. Of course, we've experimented with our friends um, DevKit at Ultra Haptics, and um, we'll be experimenting with other um, peripherals as well. And uh, those are natural uh, complements to each other. Um, Do you so, want to repeat the question? Yep. So, um, gentleman here was asking if it's possible to make a see-through version, sort of like a thick volumetric um, TOLED type of thing. Um, it's not possible with this exact version of the technology, but we have a variation of it that allows that to be possible. Uh, I guess we got to get ready for the next speaker. So, uh, booth nine three eight. Well, <laughs> thanks. I give this. We have about four minutes. So, if you want to ask any, answer any other questions. Oh no, I give it to the guys in the back. Okay. Here, let me switch to the, our fun hello world. This will be. A, okay. We. So I'm gonna switch to something that I promise you'll love. So your hand, you can interact with it. You can switch the name. And I'm going to fire some calls at him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm imitating what he's doing inside of the, the looking glass. <laughs> um. Yeah, I know. It's amazing. High fidelity. What are you doing to get the resolution up? What are you um, doing to get the resolution up? So there's a few, there's a few techniques that we've developed over the last four years to really pump the resolution up, um, the perceived resolution, um, up to a level where the lifelikeness of the content inside is what hopefully you remember and no, not the resolution and whatnot that the, this type of class of displays possible, um, makes possible now. I should have brought the bigger one. <laughs> sure. Any peripherals, whether it's real sense or leap motion or ultra haptics, we're peripheral agnostic. And um, the most popular peripherals, we will support directly in our SDK um, so that it's easier for developers to develop on those. So the two that we've supported most deeply so far are the RealSense SR300 and other depth cameras in the RealSense line and the Leap Motion. But that's just because um, we're obscure right now and haven't had a, as many of these conversations as is hopefully starting now. I'm going back to the booth. Anyone can follow me. Oh, so Nikki is going, Nikki from Looking Glass is going back to 938 booth. Um, I don't want to botch anything for the next speakers, but anyone who has a burning desire to um, squish the holographic man inside of a looking glass um, can, follow, can follow her, I think. <laughs>